looking at a man right now that I am excited to have speak to you this morning. This brother right here, I'm going to say it. He's the black version of Clark Bartram. I'm just telling you, he is out there doing what I'm doing. And the world would look at this as competition. They would say, oh, this guy trains men over 50. This guy's good looking. This guy's fit. This guy can work out like he's 22 years old. This guy was a professional athlete. This guy knows how to speak. This guy can do all of what you're doing. You should be afraid of him. You should be intimidated by him. You shouldn't let him around your guys. You know what I say? Bullshit. I want him with my guys. I want him speaking to my men. I want him stepping in here and teaching me. I want him to motivate you. I want him to take the floor right now. Give it up for my brother, Mr. Funk Roberts. Let's go, man. Thank Woo. you so much, man. That was a beautiful intro. My brothers, that was amazing. Clark, thank you so much for um, for having me on, on, on your coaching call, man. So, you know, I'm getting goosebumps right now. I was like, as I scroll through here and I see all of these amazing guys from all over the world here, uh, you know, just, just coming in on this on this morning to, uh, you know, to, to talk. And I'm, I'm again, I'm really, really excited to be here. Thank you so much for that intro. And uh, yeah, I mean, it is an honor for me to be on here because well, just let me just quickly back up for you guys who don't know who I am. My name is Funk Roberts. Uh, I'm a yeah. former professional athlete. Uh, I was a professional athlete for 15 years, uh, you know, between the ages of 19 and 30 or 14 and 15 and 30. Um, and I also fought professional Muay Thai as well. Uh, so I went from a professional athlete and I trans transitioned into, you know, after the nine to fives into a uh, fitness, online fitness expert, certified MMA strength and conditioning coach. So I've coached fighters all over the world, UFC champions. Um, you know, I, I'm a master metabolic trainer, which means I've actually created certification courses for trainers and coaches to train using me metabolic training or HIIT training. Um, fitness expert, Amazon bestseller, blah, blah, blah. And the reason why I'm telling you all this is because I want you to understand that I'm not just um, influencer or some, you know, uh, content creator or anyone who doesn't, who has lived the life that you guys have lived. I'm 53 years, years old. And three years ago, I transitioned into helping men in their 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s, just like Clark does, get into the best shape of their lives, 100%. No if, ands, or buts about it, because we're being attacked. We're being attacked by, A, the lack of, of, of information out there for us men, specifically over 40. We can't train the way we did when we were in our 20s, so brother, my brothers. We can't train the same way. We can't eat the same way. We can't, um, you know, we can't do the same things we were doing back then, because as you guys know, as I know, and, you know, we'll quickly go through that a little bit of my story so you can understand that I can relate to where all of you guys are and have been. Our margin for error now is here, right? We can't eat the same foods. We can't work out the same way. Or we're going to get injured. We've got to focus on specific things that are going to help us get into and stay into the best shape of our lives. Because as you guys are sitting there right now and watching this or listening to this, you need to understand that we are the patriarchs of our families, right? We were, we were put on this earth to provide, to procreate, and to, um, and to protect our families. And as we get older, no matter what, we are going to become the patriarchs. People are going to die around us. And as we're older, some of you guys are grandfathers, everyone goes to you. Everyone comes to you. Hey, what, what, what's going on? You know, what, this person passed away. Can you, can you set things up? Hey, grandpa or hey, dad, what should we do? Like, you are the one that people are going to come to, whether you like it or not, just because of our age. So we have to be in the best shape of our lives. We've got to be in the best health of our lives. We've got to be able to, to handle all this stuff, you know, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and all the other things that are going on in our lives. So we, there is no room now for us to sit back and just kind of exist. We have to stand up and we focus on getting into the best shape. A lot of that has to do with focusing on our hormones and hitting and getting our testosterone levels to the best they can be. So, you know, I do a hundred percent appreciate uh, you guys having, having me on here and being known as the black Clark Barstrom is a very amazing thing because I've been following Clark since I was a teenager, since I was, you know, I'd watch him on TV with Kiana, right, on the beach. And as I, I was a professional beach volleyball player and indoor volleyball player. And so for me, seeing Clark on the beach, that solidified the fact that I wanted to play professional beach volleyball on the beach 
you know, so I can see all the ladies in the bikinis and travel the world, which I've done, play the top level, play against Karch Karai and all the top fly ball players. And then seeing him throughout the year, seeing the integrity that Clark brings to the fitness industry on the cover of magazines, you know, and as he got older, he still walked the walk and talked the talk. And then once he reached the age of 40, I know he was doing other things in the, in, in the 40 space. Once again, walking the walk, talking the talk and very transparent. You know, yesterday he came on and he talked about being not wanting to work out. You know, I, 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 that's how I actually jumped. Like I reached out to him again. I'm like, I saw him say that. He's like, I didn't want to work out today, but I did it. Right. And that's, that's being transparent. That's being transparent. That's the type of person you want to help you get results you're looking for. And yes, just like, uh, like, uh, um, like Clark said, I, I, I work with men. I help men, um, you know, over 40, literally transform their lives, just like Clark's doing. I've, I've had my over 40 Alpha Brotherhood for over three years with 10,000 members from all over the world who all come in with similar struggles and the same, you know, same type of struggles. Uh, you know, the, the, the low testosterone levels are low, although most guys don't realize that testosterone is what's, what's, you know, what's behind all of the health ailments that we're probably coming in with, like, you know, we can't get rid of the belly fat, or we are obese, or we have these health problems, you know, blood pressure, or cholesterol, or all of these different uh, pre-diabetic, you know, um, a lot of us, some, some of us are depressed, you know, no energy, suicidal, hormones are all in ba balance, you're coming in with man boobs, wondering, why do I have man boobs? Well, because your estrogen levels are high, you know, um, uh, and there's so many different things, so many different things that we are coming in, it's harder for us to build muscle. We're getting injured more. And all of those things happened to me when I reached 40. You know, like I said, I was a professional athlete. Um, I traveled the world. I played at the highest levels. And then when I reached 30 and I retired, it was a nine to five job, right? Got the, I got the kids. I got the girls that I was trying to, you know, I was living with here and there. And I have the nine to five, you know, you're punching in, you're sitting on a chair and you're just, you know, selling online on the phone, Dell computers or whatever it was. And so, but throughout all that whole time from my 30s to uh, early 40, I still, you know, I was still working out. I was, I was actually starting to do YouTube stuff, uh, but I was using, you know, bro split type workouts, you know, buys and tries, back and shoulders, things that, that worked for me when I was younger, um, you know, cardio on the cardio machine for 60 minutes. Again, things that worked for me when I was younger, but when I reached 40, something happened. It was like, you know, I, I was literally 30 pounds overweight. So even though I was posting workouts online, I always wore a shirt because I was puffy. I was 220 pounds of puffy muscle, big, puffy, but you could hide that, right? You can kind of hide that with, with these type of shirts. No one really see your, your abs. And so I didn't know what was happening. And then my energy level started to slow down. And I wasn't getting the results I was looking for. And my, even my um, workout partner was like, hey, man, doesn't that, doesn't, that, doesn't that piss you off that you are one of the hardest workers in this gym? You come in here every day, you're working out an hour, an hour and a half, and you still look the same. And, I, you know, of course, I'm going to back up and like what are you talking about I was like, well you're still the same you still have, you're still fat <laughs> i'm like what are, you, what are you talking about you know of course i'm gonna get defensive but when i got home and i looked at myself in the mirror i finally took off the shirt because a lot of times we don't take off that shirt we i i was still living in the hey don't you know who i am i'm funk roberts i used to be a professional beach volleyball player kids at the gym are like what happened to you? You know, like that's the worst thing that can, what happened to you? You know, it's like, oh, God damn, that's the last thing I want to hear. But I had to, I had to face the reality of like, look at me, I'm a mess. And then, so, you know, I started to work out harder, right? More cardio, cut out carbs, you know, you go jump on all these crazy diets, Atkins, freaking uh, all kinds of crazy diets. When, you know, uh, 12 years ago, that was, I was trying, I was trying and nothing was happening. And then the big thing, you know, I was living with a girl and she literally left me because I couldn't satisfy her. And that's what she told me. Hey man, you can't satisfy me. I got to go. And you know, for me, that was a big, that was really big because then I started to, um, you know, uh, I, I self-medicate, right. I would go out, I would drink, I would do drugs. I would go to strip joints. I would try to mask my manhood by drinking and going out and trying to, you know, be, be promiscuous. And just, it just went down from here. All the like, into a deep depression because that's not who I was. And so when I went to the doctor and I got my, my, my tests done, just like some of you guys get your tests done, you realize doctor was like, dude, you, your testosterone was like 191. And it's like, that's impossible. I'm 215 pounds. How can my, I'm big and muscular. 
how can my testosterone levels be 198 or whatever they were? It's like, dude, the, you being that big, just you having that belly, that's a telltale sign that your testosterone levels are low. And then I started to learn more about testosterone and what happens when I'm for, when we reach 40 and I start to go online to look for things and there's nothing there. It's a lot of stuff for women, a lot of stuff for young guys, but nothing for like when you reach 40, when you reach 50, what do we have to do? So I literally researched for months and months and years and, and, and you know, through that process, I changed, I can, you know, I, I transformed my body into, you know, 185 pounds lean and I'm, that's what I've been since. Always have a six pack, always lean. Um, and in my early 40s, you know, that allowed me to have a new look on life, right? Like I, I fought, I got married, I, you know, put my kids through school, I started my business, a whole bunch of things that generally don't happen in your 40s happened to me. And I'm telling you that the reason why I'm telling you this story is because I want you to know that I struggled, just like some of you guys have or are struggling. So I, I know what you guys are going to I know the, the mental the, the how it can play on you mentally, physically, uh, just just the frustration, getting injured all the time. And so I changed, all, I changed everything, but I didn't really promote it at that time because I was training fighters and I was fighting myself and I felt like I'm, hey man, I'm, I, I'm like a 20 year old now, you know what I mean? Because I had new life, you know, when you're in your early forties and you, you, you feel like you have a new lease on life, like nothing could stop me. Like seriously, nothing could stop me until at 47, I got something called crypto organizing pneumonia. And I don't know if any one of you guys know what that is, but it's a very rare lung disorder that literally put me on my deathbed because the doctors didn't know what it was. And they said to me, listen, we don't know what this is. So you better just come back to the hospital here and die here if you're going to die because we don't know what it is. And at that point, I was at, at the peak of my health. So getting something like this was crippling. But when they realized it was crypto organizing pneumonia, they put me on prednisone. I don't know if any of you guys have been on prednisone, but it's a catabolic drug and it destroys, it destroys everything really. It's, it's, it destroys your hormones. It, it gives you all that imbalance. It makes you fat. I was lose, literally losing muscle. And so for me, that, that was when I had to double down on my system, double down on my recovery, trying to get us to sleep, my nutrition was huge, and then working out as much as I could um, in order to get my lungs going three to four times a week using metabolic training, really living over 40 alpha program that I promote. And six months later, I was off prednisone, which my, my doctor couldn't believe. It's like, dude, what are you doing? Um, and three months later, because everything I do is natural, so I was naturally showing that I can naturally, inc uh, sorry, boost my testosterone levels the rebalance but three months after my t levels tripled and again it's like what the hell's happening because my doctor would not put me on testosterone replacement therapy like he would not do that specifically because i was on prednisone and you know because at one point i was very desperate man <laughs> like i'm against the testosterone replacement therapy but i was very desperate at one point i'm like man i, I got i you know i got no i got five ab you know, I got belly fat coming in here. I'm, I'm crying in the middle of the day because my hormones are all out of whack. I'm sweating. Like, I need, I need something. He's like, no, you just got to, you got to zone, do what it needs to do. And so three months later, I had a zone, triple my testosterone, and that's when I doubled down on, 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 the, on the program. And that's when I knew, truly knew that, like, all we have to do is just implement a program, stay consistent, and live it right limit and that's really what it's it's all about it's about okay understanding that even if you're coming in trying to lose weight or even if you're coming in trying to build muscle or whatever it is the number one thing we have to focus on is our testosterone levels right now our testosterone are the lowest they've ever been in modern day history like um you know testosterone levels of of, of even kids these days for us men it's 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 disastrous and it shows on all the ailments that have testosterone suicide levels are pressure. you know we have obesity all of the things that are, are the byproduct of having low testosterone and just to let you know testosterone levels actually one to two percent every year after 30 so when we reach 30 our t levels are starting to decrease so if we're not doing anything naturally to build our t levels then then that's and then when we reach 40 we're suffering from sarcopenia which is a natural loss of muscle that's 
sometimes it's tougher to build muscle or at least hold on to that muscle. Not saying that you can't do it. We can definitely do it once we implement the right training strategies, once we implement the right nutrition, right? Um, but all of these things, energy levels low, confidence low, that's all due to our number one male hormone. And I'm telling you right now, a lot of the media tries to uh, suppress testosterone, right? Oh, you got too much testosterone in this room. Oh, you're too manly. Like, are you kidding me? We need testosterone. That is what keeps us alive. It's estrogen and cortisol that we got to suppress for us. We need a little bit of estrogen, of course. We need, we need cortisol when we need it, you know, before our workouts, in the morning when we wake up, we're on this call here, you listen to the Funkster, you got to get a little bit of cortisol going, just listen to this guy going off, you got to have a little bit of cortisol there, but it's the, it's the constant cortisol, the stress, that's what causes belly fat, that's what causes a lot of health issues. Estrogen, this is a female hormone, we need a little, but too much, it gives us the man boobs, gives us the belly fat, gives us the hard to reach belly fat that is hard to get rid of, the visceral fat, the killer fat. So we know and all of these other media outlets and obviously our wives and girlfriends who want the best for us but they don't understand it's like testosterone it's, that's our that's us we need it and it and we're and it's naturally decreasing so we got to do everything naturally to end, which is it's very simple it is a very simple strategy it's not a it's not a oh well i gotta go on this and i gotta do this it's a simple strategy um, literally, you guys are living it through the nanotest system because the, the pillars are literally what the strategy, you know, what, 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 what's the strategy, you know, obviously you got to get that mindset right and understanding how important it is, guys. I, I, I mean, I can't even, I mean, I preach this literally every single time I get on our weekly coaching call with our brothers. So guys, listen, we got it. You got to stay focused, uh, stay consistent. And for the newcomers who are coming in, really, you know, it's, it's, it's great that you guys are all on here because you're taking action, right? You're taking action and it's this type of action. And the type of support that you guys give each other, because remember, when you look at everyone in your in your in your community, you know that everyone in that community is going through the same journey, right? Trying to get as healthy as we can, trying to boost our T levels, trying to keep our hormones. Like everyone's doing the same thing, so no one, everyone should be like like supporting each other because we're all on that same journey. No one's better than anybody else. Everyone is on the same journey. Everyone has the same struggles or, or similar struggles, right? So that type of thing is, a, is good to keep us accountable and keep us going. But the importance of our health specific, I haven't even touched on the elephant in the room. I haven't even touched on the elephant in the room. I got COVID. I, I'm just getting over COVID uh, a week ago. I had, I got, I had COVID for like seven or eight days. And, be, but, for me, I was healthy. So for me, I make sure that I was healthy. So when I got COVID, aside from a couple of things, um, you know, like uh, I felt I got sick for a day and, you know, obviously my, my energy levels were low. And for the stupid reason, I worked out with my, my weight vest because I'm having a challenge, a workout challenge in my brotherhood. And I, you know, I, was, I, I still wanted to be part of it. So I did the workout and it just crushed me. But aside from that, everything is fine. You know, I got over it because I fortified my health, right? I fortified my, I didn't go out looking for COVID. We, you know, we're, we were very, very diligent, but obviously when somebody from the outside comes and gives it to you, there's nothing you can do about it, except make sure that your body is ready for it. So even during these times now, it's even more important for us to fortify our body, to be hard to kill and hard to kill, not meaning physically, but through all of these viruses and things and all of these things that are going on. Um, you know, the only thing we can control is ourselves and our health. And that's all we need to control. We need to control that through recovery and sleep, right? That's, 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 that sleep is the first thing we can control, you know, seven to nine hours, setting up a sleep environment that'll get you those seven to nine hours, sub supplementing if you need to, but really focusing on getting that seven to nine, cause that's going to keep cortisol levels, cortisol levels low. That's going to keep, um, you know, testosterone production happens in the morning. So we've got to get that stage three sleep to help the T levels produce nicely the way we want it to produce in the morning. So, and of course, fat loss, um, uh, because the less cortisol you have, the less fat you're going to have, of course, um, you know, just, just, just your overall health and energy for the next day. So sleep is key. And recovery is another thing that I talk about, not recovery, meaning um, not just the sleep, but the recovery in between your workouts, right? Because we want to stay injury free. That is key because there's nothing worse than getting injured, right? Overtraining and not, and you know, getting, you just, you just, when you can't work out and you can't exercise, 
now you're putting yourself on the shelf and you're putting yourself behind the eight ball, right? Because your whole exercise is, is another key element to us getting healthy, staying healthy, feeling good, feeling like our man, you know? And so we need to get those that exercise in. But like, remember I said at the very beginning, our margin for error is right here, my brothers. So we have to respect recovery almost more than we respect our workouts. And I'm saying that because you, it sucks waking up every morning in pain because you're you're in pain. It sucks um, being injured and you can't work out, right? It, it sucks getting sick all the time, right? All of that sucks, right? You, and, and as we get older, it becomes a reality. Our joints don't repair as much as they used to when we're younger. So when I say recover, I mean, you know, you, you work out four days a week and in between those days, you know, work out Monday, Tuesday, you're doing mobility work, yoga, you know, just, just low impact recovery so that your joints um, recover quickly so that your muscles recover quickly so they can build and so that you don't get injured. Wednesday, you hit the, you hit the workout. Thursday, you're back doing mobility, yoga, you know, things that not only you can are going to help you with you know recovery of your body recovery of your joints and, and your muscles but also yoga is a very uh even though it's very challenging for us guys because we're not used to doing it it's also it helps you breathe helps you learn how to breathe helps you learn how to control um you know your breathing and and, and your cortisol and your stress very very valuable and then friday you hit a workout saturday you may hit some type of workout on Sunday. Um, yes, exactly, Lackey, exactly. Yoga is awesome. It's, it's so funny because we have yoga in, in I don't want to really talk about my program because that's not what I'm talking about, but I'm just saying like when you see all of these guys tackle something that is at, at before, well, I mean, uh, what's his name again? Uh, Diamond, 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 yeah. The Diamond WWE fighter who had the yoga program, he would say something different, but uh, you know, yoga for men is great because, again, it, it challenges us, puts our bodies in specific uh, man flow yoga. Okay, yeah, puts our bodies in different different thing, places that we we're not used to. But it's another challenge. It's staying outside our comfort zone, and we know internally that this is making us stronger. And so, all the guys, you know, when they come into my program, they're like, "Oh, yoga, man, I'm not going to do the yoga." Until they like start to start to feel like they're getting a little ailments. I'm like, "Are you doing the yoga?" No, nah, no, do the yoga, and then it's it's life changing. So it doesn't have to be yoga. It could be some type of mobility thing. But my whole point is recovery and and ensuring that you don't get in that thank you juan thank you diamond Dallas Page, thank you i was looking back there because i have the book i just saw the book the other day because i used to do that when i was when i trained for my fight at 41 years old in thailand it, because i realized that i couldn't train the way i used to i couldn't i couldn't skip every single day for 30 minutes and go for a 5k run without without breaking my body down specifically at 40 but to fight professionally in, in Thailand against a Thai fighter, you got to be in shape. So I use Diamond Dallas Page's yoga program. Uh, I'm not I'm not endorsing. I'm just letting you know what I use. <laughs> okay, so that's two number. So thank you, Juan. I, I appreciate that. Number three, and you know, I always say this: you can't uh, you can't out train a bad diet, no matter what. I'm sure you've heard Clark say that a million times. But it doesn't matter how many times you get to the gym. Doesn't matter how many sprints you do, how many burpees you do, how many you know incline bench presses you do. <laughs> you got in order for you to build muscle, in order for you to burn that 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 fat, in order for you to increase testosterone, balance your hormones, increase your health. Nutrition has to be number one. Now, nutrition can be very tricky, specifically because there's so many diets out there, restrictive diets. Again, we are in our 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s. We don't have time to go on these restrictive diets. We don't have time to try to figure out these recipes here and recipes there. We want something that is A, sustainable, because your nutrition needs to be sustainable. You need to be able to stay on that nutrition plan for the rest of your life. If you're traveling, you should be able to, um, you know, use the nutrition wherever you travel to so nutrition is going to be key but remember we have to eat the foods that are going to help support our hormones and help to support our metabolism right our thyroid so you know eating starchy carbs good complex starchy carbs healthy fats because healthy fats have cholesterol cholesterol is a precursor to testosterone which means if we're not eating healthy cholesterol through fats our, tila, our testosterone is not going to produce so testosterone needs cholesterol it's the precursor it's the ignition and if you don't have that then guess what? You're not going to produce testosterone. Um, we need 
uh, like I said, starchy carbs, because starchy carbs not only going to give us energy, not only is going to help us recover from our workouts, build muscle, but it's also will help um, support our thyroid. Our thyroid is our metabolism, so we need that as well. Um, you know, uh, of course, protein is going to be key, a nice high quality protein and vegetables and fruits, right? And then finally, our uh, workouts, right? What, you know, you guys have a ton of workouts that you have in this program. So getting those workouts done are going to be super, super key to ensuring that, again, we have the full spectrum, right? You have your uh, recovery, you have your nutrition, you have your workouts. Of course, supplementation is going to be key too. As we get older, we got to supplement more to ensure that we're getting the micronutrients, vitamins, minerals that we may not be getting through foods. Plus, if we're building muscle, create, you know, creatine is a great supplement, BCAAs, so many good high quality supplements that we should be using as we go through our, our, uh, you know, our programming. But, but before all of this, before we can do any of this, it's got to be here. It's your mindset, right? Because again, we can all fl floss and, and flock to all of these great things, the yoga, the workouts, oh, this is a great nutrition plan. But if we don't have this, that means that on those days when you're tired, on those days when you had an argument with your wife or, or, or your kids are, are pissing you off, on those days when you go to work and someone at work upsets you, on those days when you just don't have that energy, on those days when you turn on the media and it's just blasting you with a whole bunch of stuff that you, at some point you just can't take, on those days when you just, you're sore, on those days when Barbara bring, comes to work and she brings in a bunch of donuts and, hey guys, here's your donuts. You know, on those days when your friends go, hey, come out with me, let's watch the UFC, We've got three championship fights tonight, let's watch the fights. On all of those days or times when you could fall back or you could eat unhealthy or you could throw in the towel or even on the days when you're in an workout and you're just like, I can't do this. Those are the days you're going to have to go into why you are here. Why are you in nano tests? Why are you doing this program? What do you, what do you need to do? Not just lose 10 pounds or 20 pounds. You got to, you got to dig deep. You got to dig super, super, super deep. You got to cry. You're, in regards to like, um, oh, yeah, can you, can you guys hear me? Yeah. Um, your why should make you. Okay, right. All right. Sorry, yeah. So your why should make you cry. You know what I mean? Like, like you got to go so deep, so deep that uh, you know nothing will stop you from getting your workout done, or nothing's going to stop you from 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 continuing your workout, or 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 staying away from the donuts that Barbara brought in, or you know, uh, instead of instead of not dealing with with the argument you had with your wife you get your workout done you get your nutrition done and then you have now you deal with that argument so that it doesn't fester you know that comes from your your why that comes from that mindset and once you have that then nothing's going to stop you sure you're, there's going to be days you don't want to work out like today i don't feel i have a workout that i got to do because we're programming new workouts i know it's going to be tough i know it's going to be challenging i generally don't want to do it on a saturday because it's beautiful here in toronto canada i'd rather be outside just chilling but i got to get it done because i know i know that in the long term it's going to obviously be better i'm going to feel better after that workout and then when i eat the healthy foods the you know i'm going to have a steak i'm going to have uh asparagus i'm going to have uh you know, a nice kale salad and uh, and some avocado, you know, and, and just just that, knowing that that's what's coming after the workout is incredible. So the mindset's going to be key. You got you got to put the value on your health as your number one thing, because you know that when your health is at its peak, then you can. You know, if, if you're if one of your value systems is is your kids, then you can keep up with your kids. Right right? It's specifically because you're healthy. If one of your value systems is work, like, you know, I want to, I want to move up in, 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 in my, you know, I want to move up the chain and the ladder at work. Well, if you're getting sick all the time or you have no energy, you can't do that. You don't have that mindset, right? You don't have the, the brain power to get used to where you need to go. If you have a business, specifically, if you run a business, man, you have to be <laughs> as healthy as you can because the stress that happens when you run companies is unbelievable as, as a lot of you guys probably know um if you value just being out with your friends and just you know that sort of thing if you value that again you need to you need to 
to be as healthy as you possibly can. If you value your wife and value the family, your own family, you want to be as healthy. So whatever your value system is, you value making money. So guys out there just want to hustle and make money. You can't hustle and make money if you're always sick or if, or if you have no energy or if you're not speaking clearly because you, you're, you're, you know, your, your, your energy levels are low from, from what, from whatever you ate or you're inflamed, you have inflammation or whatever it is. While your other guys around you who are healthy, grinding, making money, you can't because you're not healthy. So it doesn't matter what your number one value system is, you've got to make health a value system, right? Definitely, definitely, definitely got to make health um, your number one value system. And uh, yeah, the nano test brothers, you got to, you got to, you know, first of all, um, you know, you, you have a leader who is amazing. Like this is, this guy's like an incredible leader who's, who's, who's lived it who's uh, experienced so much, uh, who has been at the top echelon in the fitness industry forever. And so the knowledge that he brings, uh, the, the transparency that he brings, and just the love for helping you guys get results should be a testament to know that you're in the right place when you're here. And then with a great leader, and you have your brothers on the same journey as you that you can feed off of, right? You should be looking around when you get into that Facebook group and you should be bigging up all your brothers. You know what I mean? You're exactly. And like you guys, I looked inside that, that group. You guys are, you guys are a different animal, but that's what, that's, that's the, that's the, uh, you know, the, you got to hold on to that. That's you guys, right? That's what you, that's what you guys bring to, to ensuring that you're all get healthy, right? You know, that, that animalistic, come on guys, let's go, let's go, right? Everybody should be, when someone posts something, all you guys should be in there going positive, 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 positive on everyone's posts, making sure that not just you guys get what up, what up, what up Remington, not just you guys, not, not just you personally, because if you continue to get as healthy as you can, other guys are going to see. And then you take what you've learned and some of the things that you can help other guys with and support and make sure they get healthy. Because if you continue to get healthy, the nano test brotherhood, the filthy animals that you guys are, they're just going to continue to grow. And then what, and then let's just back back to where we started from. Once again, we have kids, we have grandchildren, we have people in our community, we have our wives, we have our girlfriends, whatever, that we need to be, that is our kingdom right? That is our kingdom. And we need to be healthy kings. And we need to be able to take the information that we have and show everything, not, not take the information, sorry, apply and take action because it will trickle down. But we can't just talk. We got to do, we got to walk. We got to, we got to grind. We got to do, we got to do the work first, because as you do that work, as you're grinding on a daily basis, whether your wife wants to join you, whether your friend wants to join you, it doesn't matter who wants to or who doesn't want to join you. You have to do the work. And then after maybe a month, people are like, oh, all right, this guy's, you know, he's doing a few things here. No, no. All right, nothing, nothing different from what I've seen him do in the past. I've seen this guy start off this program, a program before and seen him quit two weeks, two months later. Oh, wow, you're looking good, man. Wow, you know. And then, of course, you're going to get the people who come in and go, oh, you're looking skinny, right? You're looking skinny. That's what people like to say to you when they just think, I'm just throwing this one out there. People will say to you, you're looking skinny because they know that men don't want to look skinny. We want to look strong. But they say that because for them, they know that, man, I should be getting in shape. I should be getting in shape, but I'm not. And I, I don't want, and, 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 you know, but they're noticing exactly. They're noticing. And so saying skinny you go like, and usually what I say is, yeah, yeah. I'm, I tell my guys, yeah, yeah, I'm getting ripped. I'm getting a six pack. And that just shuts them up right there. That just shuts them up, right? And then month number three, month number three, guess what they're saying now? Month number three, it's like, shit, Rick is serious here, man. Rick ain't messing around. Look at, look at Rick's, look at Rick's body. Look at, look at everyone Rick's going to, he's going to kill. You know what I mean? Like, look at this guy's body and look at what this guy's doing. And then your family starts to, you know, everyone's journey is going to be different, but the bottom line is we have to, we have to do the work. And once we do that work, we're good. We're good because then we can start to tell everyone, okay, guys, let's, uh, you know, family, let's, you guys want to do a workout with me, family? You want to eat a little bit healthier, you know? And, and, and it's, it's, again, it's, it's taking action and it's, it's taking action and it's you getting it done. And I think that that's the most important message right here, because again, man, you know, we're losing a lot of men out here. <laughs> we got to regain it so that we can teach our kids and our grandchildren, you know, 
to focus on health, to focus on testosterone. It's testosterone is not a negative thing. It's a positive thing. And it's something that we need. And, um, you know, that's, 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 that's my message. That's my message. I hope, I hope, I hope that helped. <laughs> I hope Brother, anybody... Listen, you don't even understand how much it helped. I'm going to, I want to rephrase how I introduced you. I want to be the white funk Robert. <laughs> Forget being the black Clark Bartram. I want to be the white Funk Roberts, man. Let's go. Come Let's on. go. Jeez. Seriously, man. Yo, so Let's... I took a bunch of notes. Hopefully you guys took notes too. And I want to kind of swing back. Guys, Was did he not say everything that we talk about all the time? Are we not completely aligned in our message? Is this not another example of why we need to be doing what we're doing? I want to go back to what he said. And what I talked about the other day in my live where I went off, he talked about being the patriarch, how people are looking at us. And I said, remember when we were little and we were looking at a 50 something year old guy like he had all the answers? That's where we're at in life. That's why we need to be the best version of us possible, man. And then I love when you said respect recovery. That is such, I think that needs to be one of your shirts, brother, respect recovery. You know, on the back, put that on there. And then he talked about his principles. We have principles. We understand that living by principles is, is a non-negotiable. When you have a principle in your life, this is not an idea. This is not a thought. This is a principle. And then he goes, uh, he, he shared, you know, what is going on in his community, in his group. He's got 10,000 men. This is where I want to get. And he said something the other day. He said, Clark, we all need to get, there's like four of us doing this. He said, we all need to get to a hundred thousand men, you, you know, by summertime. And we do, he said, if it's one of us getting there or if it's all of us collectively, brother, I want to collaborate with you. I want to come along. I want to lock arm in arm with you. Imagine me and you on a stage with all of these men, we can do amazing things in this world because you had also talked about an epidemic. The test, the real epidemic is not the COVID. I understand that sucks to get, but it's the low T levels in men. We're being emasculated. Our nuts are being taken away and we're walking around all soft because the people are talking about toxic masculinity. What the hell is that? That's, that's, not, that's, that's <laughs> crap, man. You know, be a man. You know what a man does? He walks out and he opens the door for his wife. What's toxic about that? What's toxic about that? But he also will stand up in the face of another man if he looks at her wrong or says something wrong or treats something wrong because he's got testosterone, because he likes a challenge, because he wants to be that guy that steps in the gap for somebody who can't. That's what a real man is. It's not someone walking around looking at my abs and, and, and fucking a bunch of chicks and acting like a 20 year old. Come on, man. Those are dollar douchebags. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. And, and uh, talked about masking manhood, right? How, how long have we done that in life? We, we went out, we were drinking, we were partying, we were in bars, we were masking our manhood. You know what a real man does? He brought it out. We're transparent. We're vulnerable. We're authentic. We listen. We care. We respect. We do all of these things. We don't hide from it by acting like something that we're not. Man, I got so many notes. You know, why <laughs> should make you cry? Brother, I've never heard that before. I, I've always talked about why. I've never heard it said like that before. Every one of you guys now have a mantle of what you're digging to find because having six pack abs is not enough of a why. That ain't going to make you cry. And I tell you that all the time, man. That's a byproduct of what we're living. That's an ancillary benefit. That's all great stuff, man. He talked about sleep. I had that right here. I was going to ask him about sleep, the effects of sleep. Oh, brother. I just, you know, and I'm getting text messages from people saying, this guy's awesome. You need to collaborate <laughs> with him. You need to get it, you know, and I said, I'm doing this podcast. Yo, this yeah. is, look, I say this every week. Guys, if you think I'm fired up now, now, now I'm on another level. This is why we rub arm in arm. Iron sharpens iron as one brother sharpens another. You know, you think of Muay Thai, he's got sharp elbows. That's what we're getting, man. That's, that's what we're getting right here. We're developing those skills. We're getting those, those arrows in the quiver that we can, yeah, and go. So, guys, listen, I want to open it up. I'm going to shut up. I want to open up for questions for this gentleman right here. So, whoever has a question, go ahead and pop in and ask him. By the way, thank you, Clark, for that. Thank you, guys, for having me on here, too, man. I really appreciate this, man, oh, man. so much. You think, man, my guys, I know my guys love it, man. Yeah, They're I'm getting, thank you guys, yeah, I'm getting those messages. I love you guys, man. Amazing. I'll mute your mic, guys, and go ahead and ask. Yeah. 
I'm on a phone. I can't really see everybody. Yeah, I had a question real quick. Uh, Mr. Roberts, first of all, thanks for coming on and speaking to us. I appreciate it. Um, my question is specific to the recovery piece. So I'm 51, I'm moderately athletic for most of my life, but not, I didn't work out on a super consistent basis. Starting back in November with Clark's program, so this is coming into five or six months now, I've gone from exercising one or two times a day, not including when I would walk my dog for 10 or 15 minutes, to going like six, like sometimes six, seven, seven, days seven days a week. And so my so elbow is a little bit in the front part of my biceps, of my biceps getting, getting kind of sore, kind right? Of sore. And so I'm trying to balance out, um, I feel a need to want to lift every day, which is great. But by the same token, as you pointed out, my body is um, not as responsive as it was when I was younger. So what's a good blend of weights with yoga? Like I do a little bit of yoga, not maybe I should be doing more. So what's your feeling on recovery? That's a great question, man. Phenomenal question. So yeah, that is a big thing. We, we get, we start getting healthy and then we want to do more. But what is happening to you specifically because you can start to feel in the joints, you're starting to feel in the shoulders because you're lifting every day because you have that energy. It's not a sustainable training regime, right? Remember, we got to respect, right? And so respecting means I want to continue to lift heavy for the next five years without feeling my elbow, without feeling my shoulder so I can get gains. Because if you're working out every single day, it's not just about not getting healthy. What happens in recovery? Okay, let's let's think about this. In the gym, you're breaking down muscle. You're catabolizing your muscle. You're breaking it down. When is that muscle going to grow? The muscle is going to grow and repair A, during sleep, and B, during your recovery day. You're eating healthy. You're feeding the body what it needs. You're getting, uh, you know, you're getting water. You're, you're letting your body and muscles grow because your muscles are saying, hey, man, you just broke me down yesterday. So in order for me to, to uh, come back the next day, in order for us, our muscles to come back the next day, we need time to grow. We need time to repair and get stronger so that now on the Wednesday, Monday you worked out, that's, that's, that's stimulation day. I call that stimulation day. The recovery day, we call that growth day. Because when you have a different mindset, oh, today's growth day, right? I'm, I'm not working out today because my muscles are repairing and growing. So what am I going to do to help my muscles repair and grow? I'm going to feed it the food it needs. I'm going to, it doesn't have to be yoga. It could be mobility. I'm going to, I'm going to help recovery process by keeping inflammation down by you know making sure that my muscles are getting longer they're getting stronger through joint health through mobility you know yoga whatever it is so that Wednesday when I'm coming back in the gym I'm blasting hard because now my muscles are like hey thank you for what you did now you can lift you can progressively overload you can do all of those principles are going to help you get stronger third so again you break down Thursday growth day that's the, listen you see that, that that picture with with arnold and uh and uh i can uh, franco you know they're on the couch growth day they're just chilling man they're just chilling that's that's the mindset so then you go monday rest i, I don't want to say rest recovery because you do like to do things so you can go out for a walk you can do you yeah. know the things that are going to help fortify your muscles so that and your joints so you, they don't get injured so five years down the road when we're back on this call you and me are talking you're like hey funk remember those days when i did six days a week uh -uh. i'm down to four days a week monday wednesday friday and then saturday if you want to do something those other two days i've been focusing on mobility and flexibility and what have you and sunday is complete rest day i'm meal prepping i'm getting my mind and my body ready for the next week so Again, you, you only go so far. It's like that. It's like that. Uh, you know, when you go to the circus, you see that guy spinning the plates. He's spinning a ton of plates, right? He's got all the plates going. You know, you know what I'm talking about. But and he, oh, I can keep it up for three months. Ah, it, it, those plates will always fall and break. And when you do, when you're working out six days a week like that, it, you're gonna break 100. percent And then you're gonna then you're gonna get injured. And then all you're doing now is trying to fight getting rid of this injury. And now your whole life is about I gotta get rid of this injury. I got an elbow injury. I got tennis elbow. I got you know knee. I got you know patella. In, you know stuff. I can't do lunges. I can't do this. It's like now the now the narrative is I can't do. I can't do. I can't do. I can't. My shoulder, dude. If you if you mess up your shoulder, 
it's over. You can't do curls. You can't do presses. You can barely hold the freaking barbell or dumbbells up here because your shoulders are impeded. Pinch, I know because I only have a couple of, I've lost a couple of muscles in my shoulders from past, you know, fighting and volleyball. But anyways, besides the whole point I'm trying to make is once again, we got to respect that recovery. Now we got to bring it in because you want to be training. Your workouts are going to be way better. Your, your, your workouts on those, on those days are going to be more intense. You're going to be better recovered and you're going to get better results faster. 100%. Thanks, man. Hey, I guess one more quick question. Yep. So my daughter's 13. She plays travel yep. volleyball. We're going to a tournament today up in Orange County, California. And she yep. has asked me to ask Clark. And so I'm yep. going to ask Clark and you while you're both oh. here, uh, what is an exercise that she can do to spike uh, harder? What's some good exercises for that? Spiking harder. Okay, so uh, Clark, do you want to go Clark or? I'll jump in real quick. So the general rule of thumb is all human movement originates from the core. So anything like this is generated from the core. So as odd as it might seem, having a strong core is going to help generate that velocity. And, you know, and then of course, mobility exercises because the shoulder articulates more than any other joint in the human body. And that's why Funk just said, when you mess it up, you limit your ability to do everything. So I have spent a lifetime not warming up. <laughs> I've never been a guy to warm up. I just go in and I could do my workout with never warming up. Fortunately, I'm not feeling the effects of that today, but warming up that joint because of the ability to articulate through so many ranges and planes of motion is, is vital. So my answer would be core stability and range of motion exercises, these small little things that nobody wants to do. You know, the, this stuff and, and, and the internal and external rotation. This is so boring. It's not glorious. It's not glamorous. It's not like, and that goes to like guys training their abs too. That's a whole nother conversation. Go ahead take it over, brother. Yeah, I mean, okay, so the, the great question. Um, okay, so for me, again, I played indoor volleyball. At the high school level, I played in Switzerland and I played beach volleyball during, in, on the ABP against some of the best players ever. Karch Cry, Sinjin Smith, you know, uh, the list goes on. I'm five foot 11. So now luckily in the 90s and 80s when I played, 5'11 wasn't that short. Now it's 6'10, 6'12, 6'11 is, is normal, specifically on the beach. But for me, because I was only 5'11 and I could jump high, I needed what, what will help me stand out? Well, it was hitting hard. That was my number one thing. My number one thing was being able to hit the ball extremely hard and straight down. So just like Clark said, it was a lot of a lot through the core, but most importantly, it's also technique. You so it's the technique of coming up, hitting the ball at the top of its of, of the peak, and then coming down using your core, right? So it's you're up, you're using that other hand, you're coming down. <clears throat> And it's consistent and constant practice of that, that movement, right? Keeping the shoulder close to the body, not spiking the ball out here. The further away the ball is from your body, the less you're going to have, your less velocity you're going to have. So once you get, you know, making sure that she continuously warms up before, um, you know, before practice, before games, like she's got to be five minutes doing her shoulder warm ups because if the focus for her is getting power, then she's going to be a power hitter or an outside hitter or whatever, middle, then that's what she does. Then, of course, the core training, right? So you can do that at home. You only have to do that in the, in the gym. But then, you know, you're, she's up against the wall, she's throwing that ball up, and it's just, I, I, in practices, I would hit the ball literally five, 600 times. That's just, you know, repetition. But it's that perfect repetition, keeping the shoulder close to the elbow, uh, to your, keeping your shoulder close to your ear, because that's where you're going to generate the most power, right in this straight line. Power doesn't come out here. You may spike the ball, but she is going to get that, that power from here. So at 13, she's in a perfect age group because the more she just consistently practices the right technique, the right technique, every day, she can go outside – Maybe probably not in your garage because you're going to hear it. But I used to do that on my garage. My parents used to kill me because I would do all the stuff. You know, I'd go to the school and hit, against the, hit the volleyball against the wall. Like all of these things that – because I wanted to be the best. So for me, in order to be the best, I had to do all these things outside of being in the gym, right? So just like Clark said, shoulder work for sure. 
core work, 100%. Because when she goes up and finishes that spike, ooh, it's right here. Core's got to be tight. Everything's got to be compact to keep that power. You guys know this, when you're deadlifting, when you're squats, it's the core. It's the core. If your core, if your core isn't strong, that's going to limit your deadlifts. That's going to limit your, your, your squats, right? If you have a super strong core, you'll be able to go deeper. You'll be able to, you know, squat. I know I'm getting off topic here, but hopefully that helps. <laughs> <laughs> the answer you're looking for. It's, it's hard to keep I a guy like you on topic. You got so much passion, brother. It just it it <laughs> blows out, man. But I want you to notice what Funk was demonstrating there is was the integrative aspect of what he was doing. It wasn't isolated. And that's why we train these integrative movements because the human body is meant to integrate. It's not meant to isolate, right? We spend so much time like doing bicep curls. We're an integrative by nature. That's where we're the most powerful. As a fighter, you're integrating all of these things together as a any sort of athlete. If you're not integrating, you're isolating and you're injuring and you're not being as effective as, and, and that's why I love that demonstration of what he was showing, right? All of that stuff, man, all of these little minor things matter. And, and I work with quarterbacks. It's the same thing, right? It's, it's the same thing. So I have someone on a bag, just like, remember how George Foreman used to hit, bah, bah. I have people bah, just like that on the back, bah, bah, you know, because you're uh, getting all that torque, torque, you know, that's pop. Oh, man, we're fired up. Let's go. Who else? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> you mentioned oh, metabolic conditioning. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Go ahead. Oh, yep. I, I, just, I want him to, to, to talk a little bit more about the metabolic conditioning because I, um, I, I, I like that part about the workout. Yeah. Great question, man. Yeah. That's my, I mean, that is, that's my, uh, that's my passion right there. So metabolic training basically is like hit training. Right. Um, and there's so many different protocols that combine metabolic training. And the reason why I like metabolic training is because what it does is allows you to get a workout done in a short period of time while helping you burn calories during that workout and after there's something called epoch or the afterburn effect which means that you know once you you work out for 20 minutes or 30 minutes at a high intensity uh whether it's with resistance whether it's with your body what have you then not just you know the body has to get back to homeostasis and if you're just doing cardio like let's say you're doing 45 minutes 60 minutes on the treadmill or on the stair climber like right after that 60 minutes it's going to take your body maybe an hour to maybe an hour and a half if you're lucky to get back to homeostasis which means your the calories are still burning but that's only an hour after the workout you just put it in an hour metabolic training on the other hand literally 24 to 36 hours after and this is lots of studies have have, have proven this 24 to 36 hours after you're still burning that's why there's guys in my program are like three hours later they're like punk why am i still sweating so you're still sweating because your body your metabolism is still going because your body's still getting yourself down to homeostasis so using metabolic training also it's short right short workouts they're not long remember we want to stay in that growth hormone testosterone a stage right if we go if you work out for too long too often you're going to get into that cortisol stage the stress you know your, your stress levels are going to start to increase which you don't want you don't want it for a short period of time but not you know excessively so trying to get and we're men we, we have things to do we got life to live so we want to be in and out and and i like metabolic training because it doesn't a lot of people just think it's just body weight stuff but for us we use a lot of dumbbells so i got these guys doing like you know so here, here's a here's an example protocol so it makes sense. So you'll do, let's say, five exercises, five dumbbell exercises, and you'll do like chest press, you know, different types of, you know, uh, uh, dumbbell press for 40 seconds, as fast as you can, good form, then you'll rest for 20 seconds. Then you'll get up and you'll do, you know, uh, bent over rows, bent over rows, but not just bent over rows, you know, you're doing, you're doing singles, you're doing doubles, wh whatever it is, 40 seconds rest for 20. Oh, okay. Now you're back. You're doing, you know, a squat uh, variation. So you're just going moving from one exercise to the other, to the other, to the other. Then you may rest for 60 seconds and do it right. And there's so many different ways you can set it up where you're still building muscle, 
right? We're still breaking down the muscle if you're using dumbbells, but now we've got the conditioning, we've got the cardio, because guys, we also want that conditioning and cardio too. We gotta be able to run after someone who's who's uh, trying to attack us if that's the case, right? So, so getting that cardio in to burn fat, getting the muscle building in, or you may just wanna do body weight. You might wanna throw burpees in there. You may wanna use barbells. You know, I've done a lot of metabolic training with barbells, specifically with my fighters. And it's so versatile. So yeah, I, I mean, that's what we do in my program. It's metabolic training. Uh, I did have to add some hypertrophy training because what started to happen where guys were like getting lean and ripped and they're like, hey, Funk, man, I want to like focus on some bodybuilding style. So I threw in some hypertrophy style still, short workouts, but yeah, metabolic, man, that, that's, that's a great way specifically for us guys as well. You got me excited. I'm going to, I'm going to resurrect something that I used to do. If you guys remember on my Instagram stories, I would do something I called metabolic mayhem, where I would do this combination of those exercises very quick. In short, there were four to five exercises, but it's very effective way of training because everything that Funks just said is just true. It's like, we've got stuff to do. Who wants to spend two hours in the gym? And, and, and it's challenging. We were doing some of that when the guys came over to the house with the medicine balls and, and the different things. So there really is, and, and the beautiful thing about it is, is there's no rule to it. Like Funk said, you can mix this up any way you want. 40 seconds on, 60 seconds off, 60 seconds on, 10 seconds off. Do bicep curls fast, slow, do them alternating. Whatever you want, that's the beauty of your human body. It does what it does and it does it beautifully and you're in charge of it and no article in a magazine or no one out there should dictate exactly what you do because they don't know you. They've not sat around you <laughs> and they don't have the privilege of like experiencing your life. So one other thing that you said, Funk, that I forgot to mention was, you know, we look at guys like you and assume that you never have a bad day. We assume that you were not fat at one point in your life, that you did not never abuse drugs or alcohol or any of these things that you revealed through transparency that I think are important because, you know, you get put on a pedestal of he's always looked like that. He was a professional athlete. He was an MMA fighter. Those are all badass things, but that's not the entirety of your life. No, exactly. I mean, you know, I was I was like, like I said, big, puffy, uh, you know, and, and, and again, when I suffered from a lot of those ailments, not a lot, but the crypto organized one, I got completely out of shape. Right. Like my I lost a muscle, like literally instead of having a six pack. I had five. It was, it was crazy. The, the effects and yes, you know, I, I'm in, I'm in recovery still because, you know, I was, I was self-medicating in my, in my early forties when I didn't know what to do. Right. I was using drugs and I was, I was, it was, it was a very bad situation for me. And so I have those struggles um, and had those struggles. I mean, I've been in recovery for 10 years, so that's all good. But the whole point I'm trying to say is I, I did not look like this the entire time. Believe me, I was, in a point where I was like, how am I going to lose this fat? Like I had no idea. And I was posting workouts on YouTube. So I was actually posting like I was, you know, yeah, do this bicep workout and coming home and looking at myself in the mirror and going, how am I going to, I've always wanted to have the, the, the Clark Bartram body all the time. 365. Is that even possible? You know, you're like, is that even possible? And, you know, and, and, and then once you, you change everything up and you stay consistent and sustainable, change your focus away from drugs, away from drinking. I don't, I haven't drank in years. Why? Because I don't want to lose the six pack. And I know that alcohol is going to be the first thing. So I don't need alcohol in my life. I, listen, I partied. I was a professional athlete. I partied like a rock star for many, many years. I don't need to be partying like a rock star at 52 anymore. Those days are over. I can sit back and rem remember those days and glamorize them if I want, but I don't need that right now. I got a whole new life. We all do. We all have a new life that we need to focus on. So we don't need all of that. The, you know, if you want to have a, a glass of wine with your wife once in a while, sure. But the days of going out drinking with your buddies, that's, that's over, man. That's for kids. You know, that's, that's for kids. Uh, we want to keep our body as strong as possible, as, as healthy as possible moving forward. Because listen, here's the thing. With all this science and all the technology and all these drugs coming out, we do have the ability to live till we're 100, but not in a wheelchair. Like my grandmother was 99 years old. She was in a wheelchair at 99 when she died. We have the ability to live like we're living today at 100. Imagine that. 
right? Seeing your great, great, great grandchildren, right? That's what you want. You want to see your legacy that you're leaving, right? Because who knows what's going to be out there 10, 20 years from now, but we can't access that stuff if we are not in the best shape starting today. The new lifestyle. This is a lifestyle, guys. This isn't a 30-day program, a 90-day program. It's a lifestyle. It's our new life. We're just going to, this is what we're living. So a lot of guys want to know how to get more of your content. I'm going to have Danny post in here, your YouTube channel and your website, because you didn't want to promote. Yeah. And I appreciate the fact yeah. that you're trying to respect a boundary, but there aren't any, you know, we're preaching the same message. We're reaching the same demographic. And I want my guys to have access to your content because there's value that you bring that I don't. And I understand that. And I want to lean into that and rely on that and, and give you the opportunity to speak into this men's lives because we all need additional motivation. And we mm -hmm. all at some point are going to fizzle out and go, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm done with this. I'm tired. I don't want that to happen. I want this to be a lifestyle, like you just said, for these men. So gentlemen, right there is a YouTube page. There's tons of content on there. And that's going to lead you down the path to his programs and everything that he does. So is there any final questions? We got Wayne popping up here. I'm going to give one guy one other opportunity to ask Funk a question before we end it here. That's me. Yeah, That's man. me. That's Anthony. Go ahead. What's Anthony. up? I'm sorry to step on somebody. Um, yeah, so I just, uh, 58, live in New York. I just, I get, every Saturday I have my men's discipleship, studying the word. And, mm -hmm. uh, and then I get, then I get to meet Clark and I get to see, you know, three moves, three minutes. And I got connected and I ordered my stuff and I'm in a huddle and uh, it's very, very exciting for me. Um, it's just so odd that at this point in my life, I have exactly what I need attracting to me. So I just want to say thank you to Funk and of course, Clark, thank you so much. I appreciate it. I'm all in, buddy. I love to hear that, man. And just, that's what it is. That's what it's all about. You know, it's like, it's like, you know, I'm, I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm a Christian as well. And I know we're not on here to, to whatever, but the whole point I'm saying is when all of these things start to happen, because now you're opening your, yourself to like, okay, I am, I am, uh, you know, I need help, uh, you know, and I'm now I'm, I'm focusing on things that are going to keep me healthy and, and my, just not physically, but in your mind and your, your wellness. And now you're getting all of this thing these things coming to you but you have to make sure that a it's progression not per perfection and b you have to keep going slowly and surely just do not stop the path that you're on because now you put on this path to go to where you need to go so it's like okay anthony here you go we're putting you on the path we're putting the people in front of you you know you're doing your thing but now you have to live it right you have to completely live this and and embrace it and get that why you know, specifically because you're running groups. So you want to be the, uh, the inspiration for those people as well. So you have to make sure that you're taking care of yourself. So no matter what, it does get exciting at, at the beginning. Everything's exciting at the beginning. It's two months. It's a month down the road, three weeks down the road when it's like, oh, God, I got to do this again. Oh, man. That's when you have to dig deep. Right. Like David Goggins says, are you getting hard or are you getting soft? <laughs> right. That's it, man. We're here getting hard, baby. Not that hard but that well that's a byproduct the testosterone's a byproduct but you know you just want to be living you want to get every day it's like if you're sitting down doing nothing it's like i'm getting soft right now i gotta do something not not go out and work out but do something for here and do something for your body that's it you're getting hard period <laughs> thank you very much no problem, bro. Funk, I want you to it's say funny. hi to my guy Wayne here. Wayne's 77 Wayne. years old. You're talking about getting hard. He gets hard in both ways. Don't get back up on me like that. What's up, Wayne? <laughs> What's up? Hey, Wayne. Good, man. Good, brother. Right. Good to see you, Wayne. Good. So I'm getting ready to get Wayne going here. So go jump on the treadmill. I'm done with you. Awesome. Funk, listen, brother. I respect <clears> you. <throat> I appreciate you. I'm so grateful that you're here. And I am looking forward to collaborating with you and doing some things, bringing you back here more. I can't wait to get on your podcast. I would love to help 
you know, you in any way that I can and have you provide some content for my app. I can provide some for yours, whatever we got to do to lock arm in arm. And what I really want you guys to see is this collaboration, this desire from two men who've been given a platform, who are extremely grateful for that platform and see other men doing a similar thing and respect and appreciate that. And they're not intimidated by it. They're intrigued by it. They're motivated by it. They're encouraged by it. And they want to be around it. So I will say this. Funk reached out to me. He watched my rant the other day. And he said, amen, brother. And he reached out and said, bro, I got to be around you. So he took action. He made the move. And I am so grateful for that because I'm always talking about take action, make moves. He did it. He beat me to the punch, man. And I'm so grateful, brother, that you did that. And I respect you and I appreciate you, man. So thank you for being here very thank much. So much. And gentlemen, Funk, I always close it this way with my guys. I say this. Have I told you lately that I love you? Well, I'm going to need to get back to you on that. Make it a great day. <laughs> I love you guys. I love you guys. Thank you so much, Clark. Well, we'll